On this episode of The Mompreneur Show, I'm talking to Jessica Rhodes. She's a wife, a mother of two beautiful children, and an owner at Interview Connections. It's an online agency that connects podcasters with their guests. I'm your host, Vicky Lashenko, and this is a show that features amazing stories of the most remarkable mompreneurs. Thank you so much for joining us. Jessica, welcome to the show. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me on, Vicki. Thank you so much for being on, Jessica. I appreciate your time. So now let's tell tell us how you started your business. Where did you, what did you do before and how did you have this grand idea? Tell us a bit about your journey. Yeah, so I'm so excited to be on the Mompreneur Show because my story really is that of a mompreneur. I was working as a staff director for an environmental nonprofit called Clean Water Action. And when I was pregnant, with my son, I told my boss that I would be leaving when he was born, not knowing what I was going to do after that. I I didn't think I was going to start a business. I just said, I need to do something where I'm not working, you know, 12 hour days or my job isn't my total life. So, you know, I was talking to um, my dad, who I know that you are familiar with. His name is Jim Palmer. And he said, I said, dad, you know, I want to be a stay at home mom. Um, You know, we need more of an income than just what Jamie brings in. So we need to just figure something out, maybe work part time or maybe work. You know, if I'm if Jamie's working during the day, maybe I'll work at like a restaurant in the evenings. I was just trying to think of anything. And he said, why don't you start a virtual assistant business? And I was, I really didn't know what that was, uh, even though my dad had been, you know, running his own business online, I didn't really know what he did. <laughs> I didn't even have a Twitter account. I was really just not familiar with this whole world of online marketing and entrepreneurship, but I let him take me under his wing and just learn from him. And um, he was my first client. So I started being a virtual assistant, you know, taking on basically freelance work. And one of the first tasks that I started doing um, for my dad and then for some other clients after that was booking podcast interviews, Um, you know, getting him on business podcasts to talk about newsletter marketing and entrepreneurship and business building. And then as I was doing that, this is like early 2013, spring of 2013, I started to have more interest in that kind of service, you know, more podcasters inquiring about, you know, what I do or how I could help them, um, you know, just making more connections. And just like any entrepreneur, when I started to hear that there was a pain point and a need, pop- podcasting was getting more popular, more people were getting interviewed. Um, I started to think about, all right, how could I scale my business? At that point, I was a virtual assistant. I was logging my time and charging my clients for every hour I was working. And that's really, you can only grow so much when you're doing that, when you're, you know, trading hours for dollars. And when I was working during nap time, like we didn't have childcare. I was literally home with, I do what most people say don't do. I started a business with a newborn. Like <laughs> Who does that? And so I, I just started interviewconnections.com, you know, after a great call, a uh, coaching conversation with my dad and started to map out what my service would look like with packages and with flat rates, as opposed to, you know, hiring Jessica to work so many hours to pitch so many people or et cetera, et cetera. So in the fall of 2013, I created interviewconnections.com. And since then we've grown, we have about seven um, guest bookers on our team. We're booking, you know, hundreds of interviews every month and, you know, we're continuing to grow and, you know, niche down and really get really clear on, you know, who our target market is, who our ideal client is while also growing and expanding within the marketplace. Wow. (laughs) That's absolutely incredible. So uh, going back to um, coming to your dad and saying, hey, dad, so, you know, this is where I'm at. I'm going to have to get a part time job. Um, where was your dad at the point in his business? He was um, at the time and, and he still is known as the newsletter guru. So his main core business at the time was Mm -hmm. nohasslenewsletters.com. So he had some other stuff like no hassle social media. And so these are basically membership programs where people sign up and get, you know, done for you newsletters, done for you social media content. And he also had his mastermind and business coaching, his business, um, his coaching and mastermind programs. Um, But that has, for him, that has grown significantly. So it's so cool to see Vicky, just how people 
change and evolve and grow over the years. I mean, in three years, um, his coaching and mastermind program has, you know, tripled or more in size. I'm in that now. Mm -hmm. I invest in a, I, I invest in his mastermind program. So, and that has really been, that's become really his core business now is the coaching and mastermind. Interesting. So do you think that his advice really had an impact on you? Um, do you think that maybe if it wasn't for your dad, like where would you be if it wasn't for your dad? I would not be, I, I mean, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> like quite simply, wow. I mean, Very it's definitely, uh, I attribute so much of this success and where I am in business to my dad. I mean, I've learned like pretty much most of what I know about business I learned from him because when I first started, you know, I watched, so he, um, does weekly videos. He did newsletter guru TV and he just rebranded it. Now it's dream biz, dream business coaching TV. But for over six years, he's been doing weekly videos. Yeah, and when I yeah. first started working for him, I literally watched every single episode. Like that's hundreds of videos. <laughs> and I read all of his books and he has a bunch of, you know, um, online uh, programs, um, inf information products. So I just dove in and learned so much about marketing and business because before I started my business and got into this, I didn't really know what marketing was. I didn't know what, I just thought it was kind of like slimy advertising. Like I just really didn't know anything about business and advertising and marketing and all that stuff. So I just so, dove in and learned and I learned from my dad because he is who I trusted. He is who kind of introduced me to this whole world. So I learned pretty much everything from him. And obviously <clears throat> since then I've learned from other people and I've expanded <clears throat> my network quite a bit. Um, but the, it's really because of him and I've stayed, I'm one of his coaching clients and I get coaching from him and I really, <clears throat> You know, um, so I contribute, I attribute so much of what I've, uh, you know, achieved in my business to being close to my dad. And oh my gosh, he just joined us. Hi, Jim. It's so Hi, good to see Jim. you. Oh, that <laughs> is so precious. You. <laughs> that is so precious. We're totally just talking about you. Jessica. <laughs> wow. That's, that's beautiful. Okay. So Jessica, now I know that when, it, if I would listen to this podcast, maybe a year or two ago, and hear your message, like your dad really helped you. Your dad had such a significant impact on you. I, my, what would be running through my head is that, oh, well, she's lucky. She has her dad. I don't have a dad in business like that. So not going to work for me. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so I just want to address this to maybe some of those who are watching us or listening to us that like, if you have those thoughts come up, think, let's pretend that it wasn't Jessica's dad. It could just be a mentor. And Jessica, just a really quick story um, that I want to share that is totally, totally appropriate for what we're talking about is that I have a mentor in my life too. And it, he would, he would probably be considered as an older brother figure and kind of like in the same situation as you, like he is absolutely not related to me. I met him at a conference, but he really took that interest in me. And he's like, Hey, let me help you. And he, I remember he said, Hey, um, you know, there's so many people that I would love to help, but they're just not taking action. Um, are you willing to take action? And it was so interesting because I really thought about that. And it's really hard to take action on what a mentor is telling you because it's not always aligned with what you want and what you what you stand for. But in this case, like Jessica, in your case, like your dad and you share the same values. He is where you want to be. And that was the case in me, with me and my mentor. It's like, okay, he has this online show as well. He's very successful, travels the world speaking. That's where I want to be too. And I'm willing to take action on everything he tells me to do. And yeah. so I did. And this is a, this show is a byproduct of what my mentor told me. And so I, I applaud you for taking action because it's so easy to take advice. And like for those of us, for those of you listening, it's so easy to take in this information and be like, oh, wow, that was good. Oh, that's such an inspiring story. But hey, what happened to action? Like literally take action on this just because you're not paying for this service or this, this story, the listening access to this, to this episode doesn't mean that you can't take action. So thank you so much, Jessica. That was <laughs> So powerful. So now you started your business with an infant. You said you worked during nap times. Mm -hmm. Did he ever wake up and end up on the phone call with you? <laughs> or yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got a, it's, it's such a blur because 
there's that thing called, I think it's called mommy amnesia. Like the only reason we have more than one kid is we totally forget what it was actually like with a newborn. Um, so I remember, yeah, I, he was a really, really good baby. I was able to get a lot of work done. I mean, if he took two, two hour naps a day, I mean, that's four solid hours getting to work, you know, in the early mornings, um, or in the evenings, I was able to get a fair amount of work done and just really keep the business and being a mom at home kind of balanced. Um, But yeah, there were definitely times I remember actually, because I was doing a lot of work for my dad's business, no hassle newsletters, doing sales calls and client support calls. And I remember just saying like, I remember my dad actually saying to me, he's like, Hey, you know, if, if Nathan wakes up or if he coos in the background and cries a little bit, don't worry about it. Just say, Hey, we, you know, I work from home. Hope you understand people. You don't have to necessarily apologize. Hey, are there going to be people out there that are like, you know, kind of put their nose up at you for being at home or having your baby? Yeah, they will be. But honestly, the majority of people that I was on the phone with and maybe Nathan made some noise, they were like, Oh, how old is he? And Oh, I have kids too. I work from home. So it's kind of a, like an icebreaker (laughs) at the same time. But it was around the, you know, Nathan was probably eight months old when we finally hired a nanny and said, you know, I can't grow the business anymore until I actually have that, that extra child care. Cause they really did kind of hit that, that ceiling of how far it could go with only those nap times. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And thank you for sharing that. So um, you said eight months in or when, well, about eight months in when yeah. um, you were able to hire a nanny. So mm-hmm. uh, Jennifer, thank you so much. You're so sweet. So going, stepping a little bit back, um, how, besides having your dad as a client, how did you reach out and get clients of your own personally? Yeah. So um, the first couple of clients after, you know, after my dad were by way of referral from my dad, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, Two guys that, you know, he recommended um, work with me for actually Pinterest marketing. I was doing some different stuff, Pinterest marketing at the time. Um, but then it really came from going to conferences and networking mm. with people in person. Um, I mean, I did start doing my own marketing, uh, blogging and doing, I've been doing weekly videos since April of 2014. Um, but before that, it was really the relationships I was building. Like as I was pitching podcasters, I would build relationships with them. I mean, John Lee Dumas is someone that I built a relationship with really early on because I would pitch and book my clients on Entrepreneur on Fire. If they had, a, if my clients had a podcast, he would go on their show. And then when I was launching Interview Connections, I called him up and I said, because he was launching um, Podcasters Paradise. So I said, you know, we have the same target market. You're obviously doing something completely different. But is there a way that we could, you know, like, I don't think I use the word cross promote, but in essence, I just had a conversation of, hey, we have the same target market. Like, let's talk. What, you know, what can we do? And so um, I offered a small discount to his members and he put me in his resources page. Um, and also just being, you know, offering a good service. He's referred and recommended his clients work with Interview Connection. So that was a great relationship to establish early on. And then just going to conferences and live events. At first, I didn't know what conferences to go to. So I would go to the conferences my dad was going to, like GKIC conferences and not necessarily where I go anymore. But at the time, I'm like, I just need to get in front of business owners. I just need to get out there and learn about business and network with people. So I got a couple of clients going there and, and people would say, hey, what do you do? And I would tell them and they said, oh, I'm starting a podcast. How can you help me? So it was just one person at a time. I remember actually one story, my first um, client with Interview Connections, Nathaniel Boyle. He hosted the, tra- the Daily Travel Podcast and has just gone amazing places since I first met him. He found out about Interview Connections. John Lee Dumas wrote an article. I don't even remember what website it was on, but he John Lee Dumas linked to interviewconnections.com when he talked about booking great guests. So Nathaniel saw that article. He clicked on the link and was like, well, John linked to it, so I guess it's a good service, and he signed up. And so then it's just the snowball was rolling and more and more people. It's just so many of our clients came by by um, word of mouth and referral. So, oh my goodness, that is absolutely beautiful. I did not know that <laughs> you were buddies with uh, John Lee Dumas. Yeah. So, okay. So let me recap a little. Bit. <laughs> so here you are. You know, all of us start somewhere, and it's usually in our humble beginnings. And to be honest. If I were you, I would probably be very scared to to reach out to John Lee Dumas just because, I mean, he had a very large following at that, that point already and he was this big shot, you know, in, in our entrepreneurial I wanna, Can I jump in real quick, Vicky? Yeah, please do. Okay, so um, this is something that I've learned over time is um, 
like ignorance, I forget the right term, like ignorance is bliss. I didn't really, because I was so new in it. I mean, keep in mind, you know, this is about less than a year after I even got into business and started to I didn't know who was big and who was not like the top podcast or not. I don't know. They were nobody to me. I'd never heard of them. So when you don't know somebody's a big shot, it's a lot easier to call them up or, you know, try to build a relationship with them. And really at the time, I mean, John was, he's such a big celebrity now. And yeah, he had a really big following, but he was still growing. You know, it was probably a year after he started Entrepreneur on Fire or less, still kind of in the early days um, in the grand scheme of things. But I think it's important to not look at people like celebrities and big shots because then you kind of feel like not a celebrity. You know, you got to my mastermind group always, you know, whenever somebody posts on our private Facebook or they're like, Oh my gosh, I just got someone on my podcast. Everyone times in and they said, you're a celebrity too. They're lucky to be on your show. Exactly. So, yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's so funny because, um, we, like we put people on a pedestal and like my friend, um, Nellie Odessa, she always told me, she's like, Vicky, you got to stop that. You always put people at a pedestal. And I don't know mm-hmm. if it's the insecurities or whatever it is, but it's like, everybody is bigger and better and more beautiful and more awesome than you are. Cause like, there's people my that case. look at you like that, you know, exactly. Vicky, and to, I would say to everyone, there's always other people out there that are looking up to you like that celebrity, like celebrity is so subjective. It depends yeah. on where you are and kind of what your definition is. So I think it's important to try, try to look at everyone like just an equal person. <laughs> and it's yes. easy to approach them. <laughs> See, after like I went to the Good Life Project camp by Jonathan Fields and John Lee Dumas was there too. And yeah. so we got to hang out and I really got to know him on a more personal level. And it's so funny because when we hung out, I was like, you're like a normal dude, just yeah. like everybody else. You're not this big shot. And I mean, you know, in he is like very, he, he's reached a lot of success um, over the past couple of years, but like, he's really just like you and I, and he's very simple, very laid back. And I love that about you as well, Jessica, you're so brave. And I, I mentioned it somewhere. I think it's in the mompreneurshow.com um, in the introduction of today's episode is that you are such a brave woman. And it's true what you said. It's kind of like, you re- you really don't know to enough to be afraid of it so like a bumblebee it's so funny i heard this in uh this example like a bumblebee if you think about it like scientifically aerodynamically it cannot fly there's no way it can fly but the bumblebee doesn't know it so it just flies so exactly you know vicky when i so um now i actually love when we um have new team members join interview connections to book interviews because they often don't know who the big shots are and who the big podcasts are because now that i kind of know a lot of podcasters and i know like what shows are big and i know i follow so many podcasters i know like which ones don't like getting pitched and which ones do that i all that information actually kind of hinders your ability to just go out and kind of like knock doors so to speak so when i have a new guest booker join our team they'll go off and pitch like the biggest shows and in my head i'm like oh i don't know if they're going to say yes, but they'll just do it anyway because they don't know. You know, I think Barbara Corcoran said it on Shark Take once. She said, if I had known then what I know now, I never would have started a business. Like I never would have gotten into this if I actually knew how hard it was going to be. <laughs> so um, I know Jennifer asked, how many people do you guys have booking? I mean, we book uh, close to 300 interviews a month. Um, That's crazy. So, yeah. How, so- so let's go back into the the team building, like, because like yeah. you're literally in the two sided business where you work on your business, building that team, training, and all that jazz. I don't even, I don't even know. I can't even imagine what it's like. <laughs> and then also catering to your clients and making them ha- happy. How did you go about in hiring your first um, employee or help? Yeah. What, and like, what? How? What was your thought process like? Like, did you were you like? so jammed with work you're like okay i gotta do this or did it naturally happen i would love to hear yeah so i have and for one i'll say that i continue to be a student of team building and building you know a, you know uh workplaces with culture like i just read delivering happiness the um zappos founder i mean that's just brilliant stuff i think if you have a service-based business with with team with you know independent team members or employees you really need to put a lot of focus into managing and and having a good team uh because they're ultimately the ones really that are out on the front lines working with clients and with 
you know, the host and the guests. And so I first started, I had a, I had, you know, my first virtual assistant was um, a woman named Angie Fisher. And she is now in our, actually my dad's mastermind program, coaching success systems.com. And she's awesome. And she really helped me kind of like help me lay out, you know, the team and the organizational chart. And it has continued to evolve and change. So um, Kathy is a team member that I hired, um, back, you know, about a year and a half ago, honestly, at this point, maybe a little bit more. And so she started by helping me book interviews and has evolved in her role into doing client development and sales. So pretty much everyone that joins my team starts out in that guest booking role. And then as we figure out what their strengths are, and I have all my team members take the Strengths Finders 2.0 assessment. Um, Strengths Finders 2.0 by Tom Rath is the book that I highly recommend. And as we get to know their strengths, we can figure out what roles in the organization that they are best suited for. So Sue is a team member that um, she does guest booking, but she is our client happiness director and she manages our whole retention and gratitude program. So I invest like several, several hundred dollars a month into just client gratitude um, and retention efforts. So things like sending gifts to clients, um, welcome packages in the mail, um, you know, filming videos, complimenting them on specific things about their show. So we do a lot to retain our clients and show our gratitude towards them. And then, you know, we have another team member that's specifically working on onboarding and acquiring new clients. So pretty much looking at what people's roles are and really focusing on that. And then I mean, more in the future, I want to learn more about, um, you know, on the disk analysis, like if you're a D, I, S, or C, and that is really going to help us know how to communicate best with each other. So those are just some of the things that I work on, but that is a constantly, you know, evolving um, thing is, is building the team and, and just, you know, we've even worked on, okay, how often are we doing team meetings and how long are the team meetings and seeing what works for the team at, at different times. So let me ask you, how often do you meet? So right team. now we're meeting um, every other week. So we were doing weekly meetings and they were going on about a half an hour and they were just feeling a little bit long. So I said, all right, let's stop doing weekly meetings. And now we actually just had a meeting last week where we decided on doing the um, every other week for 15 minutes. And we're going to see how that works. Because oh, some team goodness. members don't want to meet. They're like, it interrupts my workflow. Just let me do my thing. And then other team members like need that interaction. Yeah, they need They're most that. likely the more the extroverted team members. So we try to find a balance because when you're in a virtual workplace, I've got team members all over the country. We still need to feel connected and sharing ideas and tips with each other. But at the same time, we're, we want to show the results and we don't like there's no water cooler talk because we're all in our own offices and homes. Exactly. So right now we're going to do the every other week for 15 minutes on a Zoom video call yeah. and really just try to be super productive there. Very interesting. Okay. So going back to the strengths finders test, goodness gracious, I absolutely love that test. It's like yes. the best thing that's ever happened to me. That's when I actually took a different, completely different turn in my business is when I, I realized like I am a communicator. I am a pretty good communicator. It's my strength. And um, I knew that. I always knew that because I was like, talk to people, but it, it was just such a confirmation. Now, going back to how you use it on your um, members, your yeah. team members, let's say the happiness coordinator or uh -huh. our director uh, of client happiness. Yes. I love that <laughs> title, by the way. Do you off the top of your head? I'm sorry, I'm totally putting you on putting you on okay. spot. But do you remember her strength? Strengths? Her yeah. Strengths. So I don't remember all of them off the yeah. top of my head, but one of them is winning others over. Woo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh that's, gosh. Okay. Yeah. That's one of my strengths too. But they, but they were. Um. You know, I could pull them up really quickly if you. Oh remember. no, no, no. Don't worry about it. Um. Yeah. But okay. <sighs> what about your strengths? Like, how do you? Okay, if somebody applies to be on your team, do you um, filter through their strengths and say, okay, um, that person has the same strengths as me, probably yeah. won't be, or like, how do you, do you so, do that? So that's a good question. Um, in the last round of um, inviting new team members with our guest booking team, I did have people take the strength finders assessment um, before we decided if they were on the team, but I, I don't think I'm necessarily making it uh, dependent on whether or not they come on board because mm. everyone on our team right now has different strengths and different orders. And it doesn't like, we've all done guest booking really successfully, but we all have different strengths because we approach it differently. So for example, my top five strengths are communication, futuristic, achiever, activator, and maximizer. Um, 
it's really important that I don't have other people with, this, <laughs> with like, yes, so that's like because, and I'm also a D in the disc analysis. So I'm a pretty strong personality to work with. So um, I can't really have too many people with all those strengths or else we might butt heads a little bit. So we have very complimentary strengths. And so um, yeah, everyone has kind of different strengths, but I like to t have people take those assessments, that assessment early on. So we can, as they grow and evolve within the business, we can um, kind of tailor their role to be a better fit for them. So for example, and just to go back, Sue, the director of client happiness, she's maximizer positivity. That's a big one that, that made me realize that client happiness is good because she's so positive. Strategic woo and communication are her five strengths. Mm. And the book is really cool because it tells you, you know, how to work with people with this strength. And that gave me a lot of ideas of how to have different people, you know, focus, um, in different areas based on the strengths. Oh, I love this. I can talk about this all day. I have a book called uh, Strengths Based Leadership, and it's also based on the Strengths Finders test. And it's absolutely incredible. It's, yeah. yes, Strengths Finders 2.0 by Tom Rath. Yes, it's so, so good. Donna, there's an app. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I, I need the app. I know, because I'm like, <laughs> oh, the book's in my office or it's not with me. Yeah. It's so handy. I'll have to look up that app. It's absolutely incredible. And those of you who are listening or watching us, I highly recommend then you pick up that book. So oh. you just buy that book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, wherever. And then in the back of the book, it's a very small book and it just has a list of all the strengths and it goes into detail about each strength. And then the back of the book, it has the code that you kind of scratch yeah. off and then input into the computer internet, whatever website to the website that it tells you to go to. And you, um, you take that assessment. It's about 35 minutes long. Yeah. It's, it's pretty quick. There's amazing. another one, Vicki. Okay. Are you familiar with Gretchen Rubin? She yes. has a podcast. Love I her. So she has yes. another little quiz and I got to look it up for you, but, uh, it's a quiz that tells you what your tendencies are. So when you're thinking about what, like how to create new habits, we have different tendencies. So my tendency is I'm an obliger, which means I need outer accountability. Uh, Sue is an upholder, which means she'll, uh, adopt a habit if she understands why she needs to do that habit. So if I say, Hey, can you do this? She'll say, she'll need to know like the reason behind it. An obliger just needs to be held accountable for it. Oh, thank you, Donna. And it's super interesting. Amy Schmidauer did a video on her savvy, sexy social, uh, YouTube channel where she talked about how she has her clients take the quiz because, and I think anyone in a service-based business can relate to this. I love we all that. Service, but our, we, it's a two-way street. Like we need clients to do certain things for us in order for us to deliver that service. So she has her clients take this, the assessment, the quiz, so she knows what their tendency is. It's so interesting that to learn about incredible. people. <laughs> and I know of her book better than before. I have it on my Audible, like literally. Yeah. I know that's where she talks about it, but I never knew she had an assessment. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's so awesome. I'm obsessed with her podcast. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. There's so many golden nuggets. Jessica, you're amazing. Everybody's having so much fun and really, really enjoying um, what you have to say. So let's shift a little bit and go into the topic of time management. Like how do you even manage your time? Like with two little kiddos, with a husband, obviously a house to take care of unless yeah. you have like a, a maid. No. <laughs> but how do you how do you balance everything and like taking care of your guests so uh so, your clients and your team so well? So in the business, um I have outsourced and delegated the majority of tasks that are directly linked to client work, like client care. So pretty much, you know, all the booking, all of the direct, <laughs> Donna, um, all of the direct uh, client tasks are delegated to my team. And I try to focus as much of my time on, as possible on the marketing and more visionary stuff, like working on my ebook and putting together webinars and my videos, my podcasts my blog, like all that stuff I try to focus my time on. Basically how I manage my time is, and this was hugely um, transformational when I actually got an office outside of my home. So I had my second child um, nine months ago. And, but when I was pregnant with her, I went out and I found an office space. And then when I was kind of off maternity leave, a couple months in, I started working here at this office away from my house. And it is 
so transformational because now when I'm at my office, I'm here. I'm not being interrupted. I don't have a three-year-old knocking on the door and coming and typing on my keyboard. I don't feel like I need to be changing the laundry over every 15 minutes. You know what I mean? So it really just makes it so when I'm here, I'm here. And then when I'm home, I'm home. So that helps me because I'm not good at compartmentalizing. Like if I'm home, I feel like I just need to be doing everything all the time. But when I'm at my office, I'm focusing on my business. And then when I go home, I'm at home. And I actually just recently uh, took my email off my phone. <laughs> so now, literally, I'm only looking at email if I'm on a computer. And I have a laptop at home. So there are obviously times where I'm working at my house. But it's only when I'm on my laptop. And and then it's because when you're on your phone, you're kind of like, well, I'm just going to do a couple of emails, but I can still be with the kids at the same time. So I really try to separate them as much as possible. Yeah, being present is so important. I'm going to dig that. I'm going to do that. You guys, I'm committing, deleting email off my phone. It's, honestly, I think Facebook is a harder thing to take off your phone than email. It's been really refreshing not having – I haven't even had a hard time with it, actually. Mm. Um, but it's Facebook that I don't know if I want to take it off my phone because I don't know. I don't actually want to be on Facebook when I'm on my computer. So that's kind of, I think, more of the phone. Yes. Thing. But with email, it's like it's it would take it's you actually get through your email faster if you just batch it and do it all at once on a computer. It takes you so much longer to type an email on your phone. That's true. That's true. Thank you so much <laughs> for sharing that. That's a really, really great tip. So mom was listening, delete your email off of your phone. So mm -hmm. Jessica, this is so incredible. So what do you think of um some of the mistakes that people make with starting their businesses and um, you have any solutions for them? So, I mean, I think one of the big mistakes people make is they don't focus enough on how they're going to be profitable in their businesses, mm. um, especially as marketers and podcasters. We get so caught up in like building our tribe and building our following and putting all this investments into our videos and our podcasts and our blog. And that's all good and great. I am. Yeah. I do all of that. But I had a business before that. <laughs> like I had a business to actually market before that. So I think that it's important to actually have, you know, I've been, I've had some guests recently on my podcast talking about this. I know Pat Flynn wrote a whole book about, you know, will it fly? Is it actually going to be an idea? So I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they start something that's actually not a good idea. <laughs> and there's, of course, people out there like, you can make a business out of anything. But wouldn't it be great if the idea was actually something that was you know, easier to make money from. So I think that, you know, just focusing on an actual uh, problem people have, a pain point, a, a need in the marketplace um, is, is really important. And that's, I think, the first step is making sure there's actually a need for what you want to offer. Mm, that is so good. And one of our guests also mentioned that is define that problem and how you're going to fix it. And it, it, there's yeah. this really interesting metaphor where somebody talks about, are you an Advil or are you a vitamin? And people, yeah. it's so interesting. Like that vitamin is, cool. is like preventative, right? It's pre preventative from sickness, from, from any diseases. So it's keep up keeping your health. And a lot of people, smart people take vitamins, right? Right. But, and they take it before they encounter any health problems. But there's so many people that um, when they get sick, they're just like, Advil, I need it right now. Right. I will pay for it. I will get it. Like when you go, like, I don't have headaches, thank God. But my husband, when he does, he's like, get me an Advil right here, right now. I want one. I need to cure my headache. And it's kind of like, you have an Advil as a service. And so many people have vitamins, which is totally awesome. But it's just harder yeah. to sell. And you know, the other thing, I think I saw this recently on a, a quote or an, an article, but it was, it's better to be different in business than to be better. You know, like on Shark Tank, when they come on, they're like, well, what makes you different? Well, we're, we're better. Well, of oh. course you think you're better. You want to have a service that is different from other. And of course, you know, like, let's just take web design. There's a thousand, there's like millions of web designers, I'm sure. But what can you do to make your web design business different? Because if you just say I'm better, well, of course, you think you're better. So have a service that is different from everyone else. So you can stand out easily in the marketplace. Oh, that is so, so good. <laughs> Jessica, this was I'm obviously like so impressed with everything that you're doing <laughs> and you're so well spoken and all the strategies and tips that you shared with us were huge. What are some uh, last, I'm going to give you opportunity to share some last tips and maybe something you want to share, some resources that you want to share before we let you go. 
So my last tips, I mean, especially for our audience of mompreneurs is just to stay like keep. All right, let me give this one. You know, we have, I'm sure we've all heard the quote of, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Those five people change as you grow in your business and as you grow and evolve. Uh, The people that I surrounded myself with three years ago when I was first starting, I don't really follow a lot of them anymore, not because they're bad, but because I've grown in my business and I've grown in my journey that I'm now surrounding myself with different people. So you have to constantly be reevaluating who those five people are and, you know, five average who you're following. Um, literally like on Facebook, I am frequently, you know, unfollowing people not to be a jerk about it, but to really protect my mindset and to protect, you know, what's coming into my brain. And is it, is it making me feel positive or is it making me feel negative? And just as moms, especially, you know, you and I, we've got young kids. I literally, like Lucy's nine months old and she's crawling around and she's in this like extremely attached mommy phase. She's like, if I'm cooking, she is on, she's hanging on my pants. Literally, I have people hanging on me all the time. So (laughs) it's important that when you have people hanging on you all the time that you do kind of take care of yourself, your mindset. So Oh, yeah, nice. just carefuling who you're surrounding yourself with, <laughs> I think is big. So good. So, 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 so good. Thank you so much. That's huge. And for the record, I also unfollow people on Facebook. And they're the not thing necessarily is, unfriend. You got to be really bad to unfriend. Yeah, just yeah. yeah. Follow, you know, just so they're not yeah. in your news feed. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, it's a it's a pretty, I would say, recent, maybe a year, six to a year um, ago change that they did. It used to be you won't, you weren't able to do that. And now you mm-hmm. could. So... If you, if I see somebody in my newsfeed that's complaining or that's posting all these like sugar crush or what candy crush Mm -hmm. games, I just simply go without no, they don't even know it. And, and you guys, it's not rude. It's not mean. You're really Mm -hmm. what what you said, Jessica, protecting your mind and really only focusing on what truly is important to you and focusing on the positive thoughts and positive information. So I love that you shared that with us. Again, Jessica, it's such a pleasure to have you this on. This so fun. I could just talk to you all afternoon. I know, me too. Oh my goodness, so much value bombs. I cannot even handle it. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And I hope that this interview was helpful for you in your business. I would love to hear your biggest takeaway that you got out of the show. If you could leave a comment below and let me know, that would be amazing. And I hope to see you live next time, every single Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern for more lively conversations just like this. I'm your host, Vicky Lashenko, and this is a show that features amazing Amazing stories of the most remarkable mompreneurs. Thank you again so much for joining us and I'll see you next time.